Hello students, welcome back to Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that the tension member is fastened together using two bolts. Each on one side of the member is shown. Each bolt has a diameter of 0.3 inches. Determine the maximum load P that can be applied to the member if the allowable shear stress for the bolt is 12 ksi and the allowable average normal shear stress is 20 ksi. So as you guys can see that uh, these two tension members are bolted together using two bolts here and, and the joining occurs at an angle of 60 degree. So since we are going to, we are given the allowable shear stress for the bolts, so we have to consider the free body diagram of the bolt. So as you guys can see that on both sides of the board there is a force P which is applied and we are required to find this force P for the allowable shear stress of 12 ksi and allowable normal stress of 20 ksi for the given bolt. So if I draw those forces here on the bolt we will have that force P here which is which is acting in the horizontal direction like this. So this is that force P and on this side we are having force P as well. So if I pass a cutting section at an angle of 60 degree and if I consider this part of the free uh, of the cut section the free body diagram will look like this and we will have the shear force let's say in this direction let's say this is V and we will have the normal force on the cross section of the bolt in this direction. So if we add up the forces if let's say this is my positive x and this is my positive y direction this is along the axis of the bolt is our positive x and perpendicular to the axis that is along the cut section is the y axis so as we know that this force p is making 60 degree with with this uh, cut section or we can say with the cross section so let's say that um, that this is that 60 degree angle so then we can resolve this force p into two components so it will have one component in the positive y direction like this and we will have one component in the positive x right so let's say that we have one component in this direction so this one will be the cos component we can say this is p cos of 60 and this is p sin of 60 since the angle is made with this component then this one is the cos component and this is the sine component. So now if we apply the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to 0. This direction is our positive x direction. So we can see that P sine of 60 is acting in the positive x. So P sine of 60 minus the normal force this is equal to 0. And from this we can say that P is equal to plus n divided by sine of 60. Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the y direction, and this is our positive y direction, as we can see that uh, V force, the shear force is acting in the positive y direction, and the cos component of that P force is acting in the positive y direction as well. So we can say that this is P cos of 60, and this is equal to 0. And from this we can say that P is equal to minus V divided by cos of 60 degree or from this we can say that let's say if I write that V force the shear force is equal to minus P cos of 60 so the minus sign tells us that the assumed direction of the shear force is not in the accurate direction so actually the shear force is in the downward direction so let me reverse the, the shear force direction because the shear force is actually acting in the downward direction so we can say that the shear force is this is the shear force so this will become positive then so using this equation we can say that p in terms of v is v divided by cos of 60 so these are two equations right this is equation one this is equation two now we are given that the allowable shear stress we can say that the allowable shear stress which will be equal to the shear force divided by the area of the bolt so we can say that the area of the bolt is pi divided by 4 and dia is 0 0.3 inches. 
Now, as you guys can know that these two members are bolted together, joined together with the help of two bolts. And we are given, this is the die of each bolt and this is the allowable shear stress for the bolts. This is for the two bolts. So we must consider two times, uh, two bolts, right? So you must consider twice the area. So then we will be able to find the shear force. So this is two times the area of a single bolt because we are considering two bolts. And this is equal to 12 KSI. So 12 K is 10 raised to the power 3 and PSI. And PSI is basically pound per inch square. And this area will be in inch square as well. So this will cancel out, inch square will cancel out on both sides of equation. We will be able to find V. V will be equal to 12 into 10 raised to the power 3 multiply by 2 into pi divided by 4 into this is 0 0.3 square. So this will give us the shear force 12 into 10 raised to the power 12 into 10 raised to the power 3 multiply by 2 multiply by pi divided by 4 multiply by 0 0.3 square. So the shear force comes out to be 1696.46 pounds and similarly um, we are given the average normal stress so the average normal stress the average allowable normal stress is 20 ksi which will be equal to the normal force divided by again the area of the two bolts right so twice the area of a single bolt This is equal to 20 KSI, so 20 into 10 raised to the power 3 pound per inch square. Inch is cancelled out and we can say that the normal force is equal to 20 into 10 raised to the power 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi divided by 4 into 0 0.3 square. So 20 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi divided by 4 multiply by 0 0.3 square so the the normal force is 2827.43 pounds now since we want to find the force p so for the shear for the shear force for this shear force if i plug in into equation number 2 we will be able to find p force so we can say for V equals to 1696.46 pounds, P is equal to V divided by cos of 60. So 1696.46 divided by cos of 60. So 1696.46 divided by cos of 60. This gives us P equals to 3392.92 pounds. And similarly, for normal force equals to 2827.43 from here, we can say that P is equal to N divided by sine of 60 from equation number 1. So we can say N is 2827.43 divided by sine of 60. So 2827.43 divided by sine of 60. So this gives us P equals to 3264.83 pounds. Now as you guys can see that in order to justify the allowable normal stress in the bolt, the normal force is 2827 and for this normal force the p force must be 3264.83 pounds so if p force is equal to 3264 or less than this then this equation will be satisfied the allowable normal stress the the average allowable normal stress then will be equal to 20 into 10 to the power 3 so this means that p 
must be equal to this p cannot be greater than 30 to 64.83 pounds so the answer is that p must be equal to 30 to 64.83 must or we can say that p must be less than or equal to 3264.83 pounds so this is the answer so in order to satisfy both the both of these conditions the p force must be less than or equal to 3264.83 pounds so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibbler.